Hi, welcome to the next video in my series on fixed income securities, which happens to follow the sequence assigned to FRM candidates. And so that means I'm in Bruce Tuckman, the beginning of chapter four. And this is formally the first step into risk measurement of bonds, starting with what I think is the most useful single factor risk measure. That's the DV01. It's also known by a name that I think is more descriptive, price value of a basis point, and I'll show you why I think that's a more descriptive term, although we tend to use DV01 here. And so I'll show you a super simple example of calculating the DV01, including technically and specifically what we mean by it, and then I'll finish by looping back around to the formula that Tuckman shows us that at first might not be counterintuitive, but allows us to connect the DV01 to duration. So we'll see that the DV01 here is really a function of the first derivative, that is bonds price change with respect to a yield change. This right here is dollar duration. So we'll see that the DV01 is really just a dollar duration that's rescaled by dividing by 10,000. Maybe in the meantime, you can figure out why the number is 10,000, but I'll tell you at the end of the video. To illustrate the dollar value of 01, AKA price value of a basis point, that's the description I actually prefer because I think it's more descriptive. To illustrate that, I have a super simple example of a five-year bond, face value of 100. The coupon is a semi-annual pay coupon with a coupon rate of 5% per annum, five-year maturity, and the initial yield I selected as 5% per annum so that I match the coupon. If the coupon matches the yield, as you probably know, the bond must price to par. I'm using Excel's present value function. Although, for exam candidates, of course, you have the equivalent ability with a time value of money keystroke functions. So because uh, my coupon matches my yield, my price is exactly at par, by which I mean, right, if the coupon's higher than the yield, the bond price is at a premium. If the coupon is lower than the yield, the bond price is at a discount. Okay, so I have my initial price, and then I ask, okay, what is the price value of a basis point? All I do is I shock the yield by one basis point, and technically and specifically, it's a drop or decline in the yield. And so in this case, I go from 500 basis points to 499 basis points. So yes, it's a small change. Yes, this is a sensitive measure. And now that my coupon is slightly higher than the yield, we're not surprised to see the bond would price at a premium, specifically $100 and 4.38 cents using the same PV function. Okay, yield drops by one basis point, price goes up slightly, the difference is the dollar value of a zero one or price value of a basis point. So I think the price value basis point is pretty descriptive to what we're looking at. What we're saying is here, we have an initial bond. If the yield were to drop by one basis point, we would gain 4.4 cents. So as I mentioned, technically it's a drop in the yield. And I also would mention that we're using the yield here if you watch my previous videos, you know we are mindful of the fact that when we say interest rate or interest rate factor, that's generic. There are different interest rates, right? We can have a spot, we can have a forward, we can have a par yield, and we can have here the yield to maturity. Yield means yield to maturity. That's four different specific interest rates that are all generically interest rates. So, we have selected here to shock the yield, but we didn't necessarily need to do that. We could use a different interest rate factor to compute a DV01. And for this reason, at some point in the Tuxman text, he makes that clarifying remark that technically this is a yield-based DV01, meaning we're shocking the yield as the interest rate factor as opposed to some other specific interest rate. It's so common that we'd use the yield as a single factor measure that 
we typically drop that off. When we say DV01 or price value basis point, implicitly we know, okay, that's a shock to the yield because that's the easiest thing to do. We don't need to deal with the multivariate complexity of a term structure. Okay, so we've dropped it. We compute the DV01. On the next page, I've also showed a shock. Uh, well, this is shock up, actually. So I've got these reversed. That's a shock up at one basis point, and this is a shock down. We'll just get those straight. If I shocked up at one basis point, I just wanted to note that the price here would imply a DV01 that's not exactly the same, so that's interesting, but it's always going to be very close. Why is it not the same? Because the price yield curve is not linear, right? The tangent has a slope that varies. That price yield function for this bond has what we call convexity. Because there's convexity, there's not going to be symmetry there. So I showed this because sometimes we compute the DV0 this way by shocking the rate up and taking the absolute value of the difference here, right? This is a, a drop, so it's a negative, but we convert it to an absolute value. Sometimes we do that because it's pretty close to this. But if you're a purist and you want to know technically what's correct, it's a drop. It's the price change implied by a decline of one basis point in the yield. Okay, finally, I just wanted to go back to the formulas to show the relationship here to duration, but I'm going to get that straight there with a shock down to make sure we're consistent with the technical definition. And so I've got the same DV01 there, and I go back to the first formula that Tuckman introduces here, where he shows the DV01 is equal to one ten thousandth of the first derivative. That's the change in price with respect to the yield. So that's very interesting. He introduces this formula first. And my only quibble with this otherwise excellent text is that it takes many pages to introduce this formula here, which if you follow me at all, you know, I think this is one of the most important formulas, especially for FRM candidates in Tuckman's chapter four. And that is this because it relates the DV01 to this variable here, D, which is the modified duration. Sometimes you do see an asterisk on that to distinguish that this is not the Macaulay duration. This is the measure of sensitivity. It's the modified duration. So here I've got the formula that he introduces, but here are the more, here are the one I think that's more relevant for our purposes. And so you can see this first derivative of price change with respect to yield change is the numerator here it's the dollar duration. Dollar duration is the price of the bond multiplied by the modified duration. See how I distinguish between when we say duration, we usually mean modified duration. And then if we multiply that duration by the bond's price, we get the dollar duration here in the numerator. It's less used in practice because it's less intuitively useful. But I highlight it here because notice, if we understand the numerator here is dollar duration, then we understand the DV01 is simply a rescaled dollar duration. So I think that's pretty cool. And we're well on the way to tying this all together. But then if I take that relationship here and I go back here to the DV01, which is only 4.4 cents or almost 4.4 cents, Right, and then if I multiply it by 10,000, whoops, right, I multiply it by 10,000, you can see I'm getting the numerator, which is the dollar duration. And then if I take that dollar duration and divide by the bond's price, well, by definition, I'm getting the modified duration, right? Because that's all I did here. If I want to solve for modified duration as a function of the DV01, Right, you can see I take the DV01, I multiply by 10,000, and I divide by the price. That's what I've done right here. I get 4.377, what are the units? They are years, actually. Whole other topic. 4.377 years, and, and then I'm just now, I want to compare that to the exact modified duration that I've calculated analytically, 
and I get a slightly different number, but it's almost the same, right? I'll get rid of this, go. Because uh, this is a par, a, a par price bond, there is a convenient analytical expression for the modified duration. Therefore, this is exact. This modified duration is actually based on a shock here, so it's simulation. So it's an approximation of the exact, but you can see close enough to be useful. So I wanted to show you how we connect the DV01, which is only a rescaled dollar duration with the bond's modified duration, in this case, 4.38 years. One more, one last point, because if you're like me when you first saw this, and if you're like many of our members, you've often asked, wait a second, what is 10,000 here doing? Can't connect that to anything. It's even harder to understand than dividing by 100. Well, go back here. This is a classic first derivative in calculate, calculus. Rate of instantaneous rate of change in the price of the bond with respect to a change in the yield. In calculus, what is that in the denominator? Specifically, it's a one unit change in the yield. What is a one unit change? 1.0, it equals 100%. 100% is equal to 10,000 basis points. Or maybe what I should say there is, right, 100% equals 100 multiplied by 1%. But the 1%, that is 100 times, the 1% is 100 basis points. 100 times 100 is 10,000. There are 10,000 basis points in one unit. That's this first derivative. So that's why this DV01 is really just taking a first derivative, but that would be a, that's a dollar duration, which represents a price change that is just far more dramatic than we can ever be useful. It's a 100% change in the yield. It's literally off the scale. We need to rescale it by dividing by 10,000 the number of basis points in that one unit or 100%. So that's why the 10,000, I hope that's helpful. If the video is helpful, subscribe to the channel um, because I've definitely got more coming on fixed income for you. Thank you.